Let's talk about this. My favorite topic I want to talk about. My favorite topic. My favorite topic. My my favorite topic. Techno Twitter news. So it looks like Azealia Banks has fell out with somebody else. Is there like a running tally of people Azealia Banks has fallen out with in public? How she's dared to have arguments with people that she knows who also happen to be famous. People get annoyed about that a lot, right? They're like, oh, she must be a terrible human being. She falls out with people all the time publicly. It's like, maybe it's different for her because she's a celebrity. She's well known. So by proxy, you'd imagine she knows a lot of other people who are also well known. So because of that, your relationships are going to be public anyway. So if you're going to have love publicly, why not have the backlash and the fallout and the degradation of the relationship out in public too? Why not? Fuck it. I mean, if we're going to kiss and make up or if you're going to kiss and stand clicked up on the wall and pose, you know, for the gram in public, when we're going to have it out, let's have it out in public too. Let me get on my Instagram and let's rant and rave. You know I mean, let's tag each other. Let me call you names and shit. You know what I mean, let me call you names. If there's one person who's an expert at calling names, the pinnacle, the Michael Jordan at calling people names, it's Azealia Banks. And recently she happened to hanging out with Flippin Kobolsi. I think it was maybe a couple of weeks ago. I remember seeing the pictures of it on Instagram thinking, what the fuck? What the fuck are they doing together? Then, of course, I read they were doing some collaboration. Maybe he was doing some remixes, some work, whatever, innit? Well-known DJ, producer, artist, cool. It makes sense. She's in music too. They're going to hang out. They're going to work something out. It's all good. But, you know, just in terms of the worlds that they operate in, he's in techno, she's in whatever she's in. You didn't think there'd be many links between them, but I guess music is music. Let's do some work. Let's hang out. So it's a great picture, right? Great photo op. They're, they're smiling, chilling, having a good time. Azealia Banks' tatas are looking primed. Kabalsi's dressed in head-to-toe black with that garbage. What's that thing called? that Techno Palace brand that he has that he started, right? Um, going on, chilling, doing his thing. And you're thinking all things are going to be good, in it? All things are going to be good. But no, just a few days later, <laughs> for whatever reason, Azalea Banks went on the fucking offensive and just started torching Kobosi on her fucking um, Instagram saying these various things, which somebody gratefully decided to screen grab for the um, sanctity of internet history. So it says the following. She screenshotted... Um, this post somebody else uploaded, I guess, on Instagram, where it says blues came from black culture, jazz came from black culture, rock and roll came from black culture, funk came from black culture, soul came from black culture, hip hop came from black culture, disco came from black culture, house came from black culture, techno came from black culture, junk came from black culture, drum bass came from black culture, garage came from black culture, gram culture, dubstep came from black culture. Dubstep came from black culture, and then white people just made bass, didn't it? Who said that to me? Someone said that to me, right? Why someone said that? But people made dubs on dub sips so why people just went bass. Oh, that was a good one. But anyway, continue. That's what she that's what the original post is. And on top of it, Azalea Banks says the followings. Are you guys ready for Kobolsi's preset techno set at Time Walk tomorrow? Preset. So, you remember what everyone else was accusing people were accusing. We have to give we have to we have to all take a step back and forgive and extend our apologies to some of these techno YE girls, right, out there. The who can I think of? The Deborah the Lucas, right? All those like, you know, twirly fingered girls out there, right? We have to maybe give them some credit because people were accusing those girls of having ghost producers and of having pre recorded or pre set sets, right? Where they'd either have their sets all kind of timed out in terms of cue points, they're not doing much, or they just play a recorded set on the USB and make it look like they're mixing live on the stage, but they're not actually mixing. That's what people, you know, would always say. So it's always flawless every time they played. And everyone would accuse those girls of doing it because for some reason people have a hang up and they think girls can't DJ. When in fact, it's the guys. It's the guys who people actually respect are the ones doing it, according to Azealia. Anyway, it continues. She says at the bottom, he purposely broke his laptop at our session today because I wouldn't agree to a 25% um, of whatever we worked on. He asks for an OB6 synth, which I guess is a piece of equipment. We got him an OB12, which I'm guessing is something above. You know, maybe, I don't know how it, work, how it works out. And his stupid ass says, I didn't have enough space on my laptop to install the driver for it. Clever, clever, snaky kind of guy, if this is true, right? Goes to work with somebody, doesn't agree on the terms before he gets out there. Then in an effort to sabotage the recording session, purposely breaks his computer in an effort to get out of the deal scumbag behavior if true again this is only one person's account i'm just reporting the news here right who am i to judge you not judge every single day next slide um azelia banks says the following regarding kobolsi um she says kobolsi and tags him 
Aren't you the same idiot who got fired from Bergheim for snorting copious amounts of cocaine? Not a lot, not tiny, not bags, copious. Copious is like unending, you know that, that's what that means, of cocaine and inviting ugly prostitutes into a club. Ugly prostitutes, I didn't even know they existed. I thought all prostitutes and sex workers were the apple of God's eye. That's what I thought. <laughs> but that funny, that story from Bergheim is funny because that I remember seeing um all over socials when i kind of first got on techno twitter techno twitter right wherever that is you have to follow a couple of people to get what techno twitter is but basically it's like people in techno complaining about shit but essentially i remember that story going viral for a bit in 2019 and the story goes that kobosi is known to be some sort of bad boy in techno again because he just looks a little bit like a ragamuffin and he dresses in all black and he's aggressive leaning with tattoos and shit people think he's fucking what some sort of gangster or some shit it's like huh jog on if anything this is like if anything i always thought of kobosi in that label he does like as like a techno version of like palace do you know what I mean just regular guys from like middle class families trying to cosplay as working class that's what it felt like to me whatever the european version of that is where they all wear tracksuits and drive like vintage bmws and wear sovereign rings and tuck their tracksuits into their white socks like jog on Jogon, do you know what I mean? You went to a private school, your mum teaches fucking physics and eating and some shit, and now here you are saying, you know, blood, wagwan, and all this sort of shit in your lingo and stuff like, come on, get off of it, mate, get off of it. Do yourself a favour, give your head a wobble, you're not from ends. Um, but that's what I always thought. I always thought that brand that he had, I don't know what it's called. It's like that PKR thing that everyone works to wear. And because it's basically like a techno palace because everyone walks around and likes to get their picture taken with it on the back and shit. It always sells out because he probably makes 10 t-shirts or some shit. You know what I mean? It's like, girl. It's a, it, all that techno bad boy things where it's music, man. Honestly, just because you wear black and you might be tall and you've got a beard doesn't mean you're about anything. Let, let's, let's, be, let, let's be real. Like, it's just all nonsense. Because I guess in techno, you can do that because people that go to techno parties legitimately don't give a shit about all that. So if you have a bit of bass in your voice, you could probably strip most people in techno clubs. I get it. But still, relax. Listen to the music and do your things. But I love the copious amounts of cocaine. That's a big word, man, because that means a lot. That means he was doing bears and, and ugly prostitutes. Ugh. Do they even exist? Um, let's continue. The nerve you suggest... Um, she says on a, on a story, let's, I'll read the whole thing, I won't keep stopping. Um, the nerve of you to suggest that I pay you 20k um, for your present only to present the most boring, dated, cliche, pseudo-techno bullshit to me. As if I'm stupid enough not to know what good music is, which I like what she says there. Um, you know, music is music. I am the reason you're getting paid to play Miami this weekend. Bow your head to the fucking pavement and kiss the ground I walk on. Now, this is interesting, state of affairs, right, development. Sorry, I interrupted again. I was meant to read the whole thing. But in one sense, having a relationship with Azalea Banks is quite fraught because if you fall out of each other, she's going to blast you all over her social media. But then it also seems like she's very, very giving. She'll invite you to her home. You go out with a drink with her. If, you, if you're down in the dumps and you say you're not getting any more gigs and you really want to play somewhere out in America, she'll put in a call to somebody and he'll book you like on the spot and give you money and put money in your pocket and shit like so she's got a big heart but she's the kind of person where she loves hard and if you cross her sh you're dead you know what I mean you're d-e-a-d -E you're dead um, it continues um da -da -da -da. you should be lucky if um lust work the legend great album out at the moment go check it out and um, would even share a sound pack with you it was Azalea Banks that hit David from space and got you that Miami gig. They didn't want you there. You stupid manager has absolutely no pull in this country. Jesus, even the manager got it. The nerve of you to say Shlomo, whoa, is only worthy of 100 euros and played out because he is a father. God damn, there's inner DJ beef now. What? So Kobosi doesn't like Shlomo. What? Because Shlomo's kind of taken over because Shlomo is effectively like a well-behaved Kobosi, isn't it? Right? He basically is a well-behaved um, well-liked Kabosi, it feels like. Because whenever you see Shlomo and you see him around other people, they seem to generally enjoy his company. He seems to see smiles. People like him. He seems to be very professional. He's great on. He's a great follow on Instagram in terms of how he sees his journey going to a gig. You see him with his kid, great dad. Looks up by the looks of it. He's basically a. You know, he's basically um. He's basically um. What you call it? <laughs> basically, you could say Kobosi's evil Shlomo, right? That's basically what he is. <laughs> they continue. Um, you sound like a jealous, 
brought worse eating fat boy with dead sperm. Yo, Azalea's got a word with words. Oh, that's got way with words, man. She is a fucking wordsmith. My word, you sound like a jealous, brought worse eating fat boy with dead sperm. That is mad. You know why it's mad? Because included in there is a barb or a jab that only people that are close to Kabosi would know, which I'm assuming is the dead sperm thing, right? I'm assuming that's a true statement that she included in there just to be extra mean, just to extra get you in the ribs. Like, fuck me, mate. Shlomo is fertile and miles more talented than you are, all caps. You'll never be Shlomo. You're nothing without Rosa Schutz. Oh, Roseanne Schutz, yeah? That's, that's that girl, right? How do you pronounce her name? Okay, the other artist. Right, man, she's, going, she's tagging and blasting everybody and will never be anything more than a sweaty nazi <laughs> the idea of the image of a sweaty kept fueled nazi is crazy isn't it because wasn't um wasn't hitler addicted to what was he addicted to was it meth right supposedly right they said he was addicted to meth or something that they used to do back in the day recreationally i think if you watch some old videos of his that's why he's like you know ranting and raving and twitching bears and sweating and shit supposedly he's a meth head isn't it so her saying sweaty meth swe sweaty nazi is funny because you know, there's a in, in, there's an indication there that she's taking a piss out of his ketamine use, which I don't, which I would not have. Okay, no one shall diff, you know, no 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 one shall um, insult the uh, beauty of ketamine. Um, let's continue. Uh, it says here the next one, uh, Roseanne birthed you, Kabosi, who he robbed out of her master ownership and only left over twenty five percent pub split. Ouch! While also calling her ugly and desperate at dinner. Oh my god. No, she aired out all the drama, all the while not knowing the difference between Master Splits and publishing himself. Um, absolutely no one wants to wear your garbage Supreme for Ketamine Addicts. I told you about the Ketamine thing. <laughs> I, I said it was basically, yeah, okay, Supreme for Ketamine Addicts. I'd say it's um, Palace for Techno Freaks, right? Basically, attempt at clothing line, Kabosi. And how dare you diss Lust Work? Glacier Lust Work has, um, can make an entire completely analog album in 24 hours. You don't even own a hard drive. You bomb. No, she didn't say that. But yeah, wow. What a turn of events. What a turn of events. First, they went from hanging out and being the best of friends here to suddenly her telling him he's a sweaty, sweaty Nazi. Um, you know, he's rude to his label mates and artists. Um, he, he's got a brand that looks like Supreme for Ketamine Addicts. He's got no talent. He does pre-recorded a pre... What did you say about the set? That was interesting there. Is it a pre-loaded set? What was the first thing here? Are you guys ready for a preset techno set at Time Warp? Preset. God damn it, man. Abuse, abuse, abuse. But yeah, who do you think won in this fight versus Kabosi and Lazele Banks? It's pretty one-sided, obviously, because Lazele Banks hit him with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 combo. But do you think Lazele Banks went too far? Do you think Kabosi had it coming? Do you care? Um, oh, yeah, the Bergheim story. Could you end on that one? What's the Bergheim story? End There's not much to say about that, really. The only element on that, I think, is I tried to look at Kabosi on the Bergheim website and boom, he's not there anymore. He's not listed as an artist on their listing anymore, but he has played there. So either he's lost his residency and he's still guesting on there off the back of that incident, or he's just not part of the team anymore and he's have to seek pastures new. But I wonder if that incident has sullied his name in the scene and people have stopped booking him in general because he's badly behaved. Because that was a weird one when it came out because I think that was another indication because again, I don't know anything behind the scenes that goes on in there in Bergheim. But that was another indication of like how tight of a ship they run and also quite refreshing that the rules apply for everybody. You're not really allowed to do drugs on the dance floor in any club in Berlin in general. They mostly tell you to go to the toilets and respect the space that you're in and respect your patrons, which everyone always keeps to the rules. But some people sometimes get a bit larry, especially us Brits, because we, we are known, we love a little bit of a key bump on the dance floor. But usually if you're well behaved, if you're in a club, usually another person who's not even a, 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 who's not even a flipping, who doesn't even work there will come up to you and say, hey, don't do that. You're going to ruin it for everybody. Go in the toilets. So you usually get told once at least, or you see everyone else doing it and you kind of acquiesce and you do do so but there is a little back in the head and you're thinking hold on i bet the djs have to do that i bet the guesses people don't have to do that but it's not everyone has abided by the rules there is no such thing as breaking the rules maybe there's a green room you can maybe do some of that shit in maybe in the burger it does exist i don't know i doubt it because why would you want to get that risk but for the most part everyone has to abide by the rules i know another rule they have there as well 
is that if you're not DJing, you're not allowed behind the booth, usually to stand there and dance like other clubs are. Um, only back to back, you know, another guy, lads, girl, lads stand there, but usually they don't like just random people to stand there. They want to have just a person DJing there. And I think it actually looks better as a club to see actually one person playing and the whole crowd rocking and swaying and shit. That's always good to see. Um, that's great. But it was quite fresh to see rules applying to everybody. So either he's got kicked off and he's not a resident anymore or he still gets there when he needs to be or that affair just sullied his name in general. But I'm interested to know, man, what happened in between that would have done it. Something else must have happened on top of what she said in terms of getting them where they are at. But bloody hell, mate, Azalea Banks absolutely destroyed Kobosi. And i got to be honest, it was quite entertaining to watch. It was quite entertaining to watch.